My dear brothers and sisters, I greet you all with a greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. All praise is due to Allah. We bear witness and we testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness and we testify that our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Allah's slave and his messenger. Or salutations and salawat be upon our Prophet alayhi salatu salam. Upon his noble family, his righteous companions, and all those who follow his path till the last day. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, as you know, Ramadan is around the corner, and all of us have to be excited and praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are alive and inshallah we'll be able to reach this holy month of Ramadan, which is full of treasures. And be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not consider this Ramadan to be a burden. Do not say our Ramadan came so quick. Do not say that I have to fast and I have to do this and I have to do that. Consider this a blessing. If you know, just if you know what kind of rewards you, you, if you will get if you reach this holy month of Ramadan and you fast this holy month of Ramadan properly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Holy Quran and He said, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu kutib alaykum al-siyamu kama kutib ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'alakum tattakum. O you who have believed, decreed upon you is fasting as it was decreed upon those before you that you may become righteous. Now, fasting is not new for the home of the Prophet ﷺ. Fasting was from Adam ﷺ until today. Even though it was in a different way, but fasting always existed. But what is the purpose of fasting? Is so you may become righteous, so you may become pious, so you may become closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, before we, we continue, I just want to mention a few things that uh, Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan will start on Tuesday, the 13th of April. And inshallah, we will start praying Taraweeh one night before, which is on Monday night. We'll start with the talk from 7.30 and inshallah, we'll start praying Taraweeh at 8 o'clock. Everyone is welcome. Even though we say this is an Albanian mosque, the mosque is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, everyone is welcome to come and pray here. And not just yourselves, but also encourage other people to come and pray. And inshallah, we'll be united as an ummah. And you know from previous Ramadans, when we, when we used to pray that we for 30 nights together, when Ramadan was finished, we used to miss one another. Why? Because we used to see each other quite often every single night. And this is the purpose of Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and sisters, what are some of the things that we can do during the holy month of Ramadan or even before the holy month of Ramadan? It is important for us as Muslims to understand how important fasting is in Islam. Not during the holy month of Ramadan only, but also outside Ramadan. You know that our beloved Prophet والسلام, has said, the deeds of people are presented to Allah on every Monday and every Thursday. So the deeds that we have done during the week, they are presented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every Monday and every Thursday. And Allah forgives every Muslim except for those who are deserting one another, for those who don't speak with one another. And our Prophet ﷺ says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say, leave them for later. In another narration he said, leave them until they are reconciled, until they start to speak with one another. So my dear brothers and sisters, what we can derive just one lesson from this holy one hadith. It is important. 
It is important before Ramadan starts. If you have someone that you don't speak with, if you have someone that you have done something to them, or they have done something to you, now is the time for us to forgive one another only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though if those people don't deserve to be forgiven, we don't do it for those people. We do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if those people don't speak to you, you give salam to them. Show to them that you're a better person. Show to them that you're a better Muslim. And also educating ourselves to fast every Monday and every Thursday. That is important. And if you remember, I mentioned last week on the Day of Judgment when Allah will check for fasting the holy month of Ramadan. If one day we didn't fast properly, Allah will say to the angels, did he, did he fast any voluntary fast? If he fasted some voluntary fast, Allah will replace those days during Ramadan with those voluntary fasts that we fasted outside of Ramadan. What are some of the most important things that we can do during the holy month of Ramadan? Number one, my dear brothers and sisters, is reciting the Holy Quran. Ramadan is the month of the Holy Quran. Before is that the month of fasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Holy Quran, He said, Shahru Ramadan and Yadi Unzila Fiyil Quran. The month of Ramadan is in which Quran was revealed. Go and grab that copy of your cup of, of the Quran that you have at home. I know that a lot of dust have been gathered in, in our Qurans because we haven't touched it on, you know, since last Ramadan. Prepare yourselves. Start reading this Holy Quran so when Ramadan starts, at least your body, your mind, your soul is ready to recite the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And especially for those that are able to, to recite it in Arabic, in its original language. Wallahi, it is such a blessing. You know that the rewards that you will get outside Ramadan, as our Prophet he said, for any lamb being, for any you will receive 10 rewards, for lamb 10, for being 10 rewards. And that is outside Ramadan. Imagine within Ramadan. And not just read the Holy Quran, but at the same time try to understand it. You know, Umar ibn Khattab, when he was reciting the Holy Quran and trying to memorize it, he said, only Surah al baqarah it took me more than six months to memorize it. They said, how come? We can memorize Surah al baqarah for a few days. He said, no. I memorize the Quran differently. Every verse that I, I read and I memorize, I try to practice it at the same time. Not just memorize it like a parrot. Not just memorize it and you don't know what you're saying. As Ibn Abbas said, he said, it's more beloved to me if someone recites one short surah and he contemplates and he ponder upon that surah than if he recites the entire Quran and he doesn't know what he said. Especially the Holy Month of Ramadan. It is very, very important. And you know that the, the Zuhri, he used to say upon the coming of Ramadan, it is, the, it, it is only about reciting the Holy Quran and feeding the poor. So they used to do other things in Ramadan, but they used to focus on something more than other deeds. Some people focus on reciting the Holy Quran more than once. Some people, alhamdulillah, they, they recite the Holy Quran every three to five days. Other people, they focus on feeding the poor every day, either in Australia here or overseas. Because that voluntary charity in Ramadan is as if you gave a compulsory charity outside Ramadan. So others, Abdul, Abdul Razak used to say, when Ramadan came, Sufyan and Thawri would give up all acts of voluntary worship and devote himself to the recitation of the Holy Quran. So reciting the Holy Quran during Ramadan, it is very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters. Also, 
voluntary, voluntary uh, deeds in Ramadan are very, very important. But again, for those that don't pray five times a day, there is no point for you to pray Tarawih and for you to pray night prayer if you don't pray five days first. There is no logic there. You understand? If you leave Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, and Maghrib, and you can't pray Tarawih, how is that possible? Tarawih, even if you don't pray, there is no punishment. If you pray, there is reward, but there is no punishment. But if you don't pray five daily prayers, obligatory prayers, there is punishment. So for those that don't pray, please stop in this Ramadan. Start with those uh, obligatory prayers. Two rakats of Fajr. If you can't do the, the Sunnah, do only the obligatory prayers first. Two Fajr, four uh, Dhuhr, four Asr, three Maghrib, four Isha. And whatever you can do more, it's a bonus for you. But start with these ones. For those that pray these ones, even outside of Ramadan and before that, start with voluntary prayer. You know, Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever draws near to Allah during, it, during Ramadan with a single voluntary goodness, he is like whoever performs an obligatory act in other times. And whoever performs an obligatory act during it, during Ramadan, he is like whoever performed 70, 70 obligatory acts outside Ramadan. So if you pray one fetch in Ramadan, it will be like 70 outside Ramadan. The reward of it. You understand the reward of it? Not like you pray one fetch and you say, ah, oh, that makes up 70 fetches that I didn't pray outside Ramadan. No. That is just the reward. So use this month of Ramadan, my dear brothers and sisters, because it might be my last and it might be your last. You understand? This is very, very important. And also, our Prophet told us in, in, in so many hadiths, when one guy asked the Prophet he said, Ya Rasulullah, can I be your companion in paradise? Can I be your friend in paradise? Our Prophet he said, yes. He said, yes, but he said, what, 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 what can I do? He said, help make me, help, uh, uh, and, and let us make as many prostrations as we can. Many sections. What does that mean? Voluntary prayer. If you want to be with the Prophet <laughs> do voluntary prayers and voluntary fasts and voluntary good deeds, my dear brothers and sisters. One of the things that Muslims neglect during the Holy Month of Ramadan is also dua, supplication. You know, no one here, including myself, cannot say that I have a perfect life. All of us go through some, some challenges in life. You either have problems with your children, or problems with parents, or financial problems, or medical problems, or health problems, or whatever. You know, we all go through something because Allah has all of us. And who doesn't need dua? Dua doesn't need you to have wudu. Dua doesn't need you to face tibla. Dua doesn't need you to be inside the mosque. Wherever you are, train your tongue to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make dua. And that is very important. Why Ramadan is important? Because when Allah talks about, you know, when He talks about uh, fasting in Ramadan, there is one verse that Allah talks about dua in the same. When my slaves ask you concerning me, I am very close to you. And Allah is, is directing us, not through the Prophet. Allah is saying to you and me, I am very close to you, I am very near you. All you have to do is raise your hands and ask Allah. But when you ask Allah, ask Allah sincerely from the heart. Number two, believe that Allah will answer your dua no matter what. And this is very, very important. As you know, our Prophet told us and he said, there is nothing more honorable 
to Allah than dua. He also said the most excellent worship in Islam is dua supplication. Another thing, there are so many things we can say, I just want to mention them briefly. But inshallah, remember, during the whole month of Ramadan, in my talks, we'll talk about some important things. You know, we'll, we'll start with the basics. About la ilaha illallah. About the conditions of la ilaha illallah. You know, because a lot of people say la ilaha illallah, they don't even know what it means. They don't even know how to believe properly. So we'll start with the basics and inshallah slowly for 30 nights we'll talk about very, very important topics. Why I mention that, my dear brothers and sisters? Because being an imam, I see a lot of things, what people do. Things that in Islam are very basic, but at the same time they are very, very important. One of the things with, with respect, you know, some people when, when we start praying, you know, you are already in prayer, you say, Allah, welcome. Someone calls you, and you, you pick up the phone and say, I am praying, call me back. There's no prayer there. Or you're praying, and someone comes next to you, or your child is moving, you say, psh, 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 you grab. Your prayer is finished, there's no prayer there. You know, these things are simple, but yet very important in Islam. And inshallah, we'll talk about these things, so you can be aware you know, you, you make an effort to come here and pray Jum'ah and you know, listen to the khutbah. It's very important instead of playing with your phones because in listening to the khutbah is like being inside the prayer. You know that the Jum'ah before used to be four rakats. So two rakats is khutbah and two rakats we pray Jum'ah. So being you here listening to the khutbah is like being in prayer, my dear brothers and sisters. So there's no talking. There's no playing on the phone. This is very important stuff. And I don't blame you because maybe you, you, you never heard these things before. So inshallah, I will try my best to educate myself and you all about this basic stuff. And inshallah, once you know those things, it will be obligatory upon you to teach others as well. And that is al al to enjoy what is good and to forbid what is evil. Starting with ourselves, with our family members, and then other people, inshallah. One of the other things, my dear brothers and sisters, use it in Ramadan, is repentance. None of us, none of us, doesn't matter whether you're Imam, or you're a Haji, or whoever you are, or wherever you come from, no one is perfect. We all commit mistakes and sins every single day. The Holy Month of Ramadan is the month of cleansing ourselves and our souls. And the only way we can do that is to turn to Allah in repentance. For this 11 months, what we have done to turn to Allah. And if you remember any of those sins that you consider them to be major sin, you have to repent about those sins for every, each one of them separately. You understand? This is very important. Some of the bad habits that we used to do till Ramadan, try to get rid of them in Ramadan, and inshallah you continue with those good deeds even after Ramadan. Wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, I don't want you or myself or anyone to be a seasonal, a seasonal uh, Muslim. I know, Allah, mashallah, this, this guy is uh, unbelievable. Ramadan is finished, his Imam is finished. <coughs> what did Allah told us in the Holy Quran? <laughs> Worship your Lord until death reaches you. Not just in Ramadan, not just during particular days, not just only during the night of Qadr. No. Whoever we are today, we will be tomorrow as well. And after tomorrow. You know, I just want to share this, this story with you, uh, if you um, allow me. You know, that there were a lot of people in one room. The one guy was about to pass away. And one guy was asking the people presently. He said, if you were in this position now, you're about to die, you have one day left, what would you do in that day? 
Everyone started saying different things. One said, I will pray all day. The other one, I will uh, make dua all day. The other one, I will fast that day. The other one, everyone is saying different things. And an Imam was at the back, one very wise person. And they said, Imam, what about you? He said, my dear brothers, whatever I have done until today, if this is my last day, I wouldn't change a thing. Because I don't live just for one day. So whatever I've done until yesterday, I would have done it even today, even though today might be my last day. You understand? This is very important. Very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, and He said, Inna Allah yuhibu tawabin wa yuhibu al-mu khafirin. Truly, Allah loves those who turn to Him in repentance. And Allah lo loves those who keep themselves uh, in purity. Being pure. Another thing is generosity. Sadaqa. Charity. During the Holy Month of Ramadan, is the best, as our Prophet told us in Tirmidhi, the best charity that is given is in the Holy Month of Ramadan. And I'll give you a tip. A lot of people say, you know, on the first uh, day of Ramadan, I give $1,000 and that's it. It's better to give something small, but it is continuously, than to give one thing in one time and that's it. Make a plan, have a plan, plan for yourself, and a plan as a family as well. And allocate $10, $5, $1. $1. And every night you come to Tarawi, or you want to send overseas, or whatever you want to help, every day give something. Even if it's $50 in total, every day give one more. You understand? Better than to give $50 in one go, and for 29 days, nothing. Make a plan for everything. You understand? Even when it comes to night prayer as well. And also, one of the uh, most important things I could say for you to focus on, you and myself and all, all of us in general, is controlling the tongue. Wallahi, a lot of Muslims, they spoil their fasting with their tongue. Especially those of you that work in, in, in you know, being tradies and, and work with non-Muslims and we know their language and sometimes you want to copy them because you want to act cool or you're used to it because you hear that every single day. While you're fasting, one of the most important things that you should focus on is your tongue. Or Prophet Ali Salaam said, Fasting is not abstaining from eating and drinking only. That is just one part of fasting. But also from vain speech and foul language. If one of you is being cursed or annoyed, he should say, I am fasting. I am fasting. Even if other people insult you, even if other people curse you, even, even if other people say anything to you, don't behave the same way. Say, I'm fasting. What does that mean? I'm not allowed to, 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 to retaliate. I'm not allowed to say anything bad. Because my tongue is fasting as well. My eyes are fasting as well. My ears are fasting. My hands are fasting. My whole body is fasting. If you're able to, to make even your mind fast, that is completely up to another level. You understand? So, control your tongue. A lot of people, especially sisters, or mothers and our sisters and, and all of them, and even us, when it comes to backbiting, gossip, when it comes to slander, you know, we are very famous with these things. And now we do those things even on social media. Doesn't matter whether it's social media or in person, it's the same thing. If you do these things, you have spoiled your fasting. As Allah, uh, as the Prophet told us, he said, Allah, it's not of, of need of your fasting if you don't stay away from these bad deeds. You just suffered because you didn't eat or you didn't drink. But that was about it. You didn't do anything else different. 
The same way that you used to curse before Ramadan, the same way you act in Ramadan. The same way you behave before Ramadan, the same way you're behaving in Ramadan. So what has changed? So what has made you different in Ramadan? Focus on these things, my dear brothers and sisters, and improving your character and your manners in Ramadan. Why in Ramadan? So inshallah we can continue with those, with those good manners and good character even after Ramadan. That's the whole point. And the, the last thing I would say to, to all of us, the only way we can tell whether Allah has accepted for Ramadan or fasting or not, just see if this Ramadan will have any impact in you or not. When the Ramadan finishes in inshallah, and you go back to your old habits and your old ways and whatever, that means that you, you have to question your fasting again. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that we fast only for His sake, Ya Rabbi Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that we are able to do our obligatory prayers and voluntary prayers and night prayers and whatever we can of good deeds in this Ramadan, Ya Rabbi Alameen. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that were able to repent to Allah during this holy month of Ramadan. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this Ramadan a reason for all of us to enter paradise. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that Allah is pleased with us in this world and the next. Say something, Allah. In the book, who will